and arguing between the county. By morning, government had taken over, but we were proud that we could be part of that. But we can do more together if we're integrated. We are to, uh, because if there's equipment nearby and something is happening, we should be able to know as private sector and send uh, people in there. Uh, full implementation of the recently launched national addressing system. I think we've talked about this for a long time. So seeing the president launch this two days ago was a big milestone. So we want to see the full implementation. I'll give again an example again about uh, Arusha. You go to the villages in Arusha and even the small huts are numbered. This really helps with security because you know everything. I don't know who watched news yesterday and saw this um, young man who the landlord went to lock the house because he hadn't been paying rent and found 22 guns and 529 um, bullets in that house. He couldn't pay rent, but this is what he had in Kilimani. So part of this whole national address system is you know who lives where, you know. And then when you're giving services, if there's water that needs to get to Westlands, you, because you have the numbers of the number of the buildings, the number of the houses there, you know how much water needs to be pumped there. This is the whole idea of the national addressing, addressing system. The habilitation of street families, an inclusive city again. As we said, we cannot sit here and we have our brothers and sisters on the streets. So develop shelters and re rehabilitation homes for the street families and relocate them from the city center, but so that then we can integrate them back to the to the pub, uh, to the to the to the to to, to everyone else. Economic benefits improve security will enhance safety, well-being, and economic outcomes. Better security will also progressively contribute to the 24-hour working economy that we have talked about many times. So bring the system, the, the transport system we talked about, that trans 24 hour, uh, hours, bring the security in, and the economy will work for 24 hours. And that way we'll be able to create more jobs, improve productivity, uh, include product, productivity, and create more revenue for the county. The national addressing system will also spur economic growth, particularly in the realms of e-commerce and small and medium enterprises, again improving security, uh, security, distribution of social services, and boost the national planning capacity. Because if there's a department that is almost dead, not only in the county, but in the whole government, is planning. You know, so anyone does whichever, just need to pay and move, but government can't really plan for the services of the people. Disaster risk management, as I was giving the rumor case, what do we really need here? Centralized integrated unit, develop integrated multi-hazard early warning systems manned by a centralized unit so that we are not competing on who is in charge. Establish stockpiles for food and non-food items. Many of you remember that, um, again, going to that um, Huduma, we started now, Kepsa became the place for everyone to bring their food, the non-food items, and then we could distribute back to Huruma. We need to be able to have a stockpile that everyone can always contribute on a regular basis and then distribute it whenever there are crises. Because crises do happen. We don't plan them. Some of them are natural. There's the man-made ones, and that's why we deal with some of these problems, but there's the natural ones. Develop the city, county, hazard, and vulnerability atlas. Again, we, when you look at those big countries that are always hit by disasters, they know. You know, you go to a place like uh, Florida and others, you'll always see signs about tornadoes and all that, so that we know where the vulnerabilities in the city are, so that um, even those who are planning to be able to, to support and know, but also when you're going there to invest, you know what you're dealing with and you, you, you know how to prepare better. Funding and budget allocate and ring fence at least 5% of the county budget for county emergency contingency fund. And this will receive contributions from the exchequer, subventions, private equity, and it feature con con contributions because we all live in this city. Disaster operations center establish and operationalize the county disaster center fully equipped with early warning systems, hazard mapping, disaster mapping. And um, that will start making the city more livable. Moving fast, e-government, we're very excited at what the work we've been seeing happening in the digitization of e-government and really want to celebrate even NMS that um, they, they launched the Nairobi e-service in November 2021, which is primarily a revenue collection system, and would like to make the following recommendations for, this, for the county, ensure that there's zero downtown, because we know sometimes um, that, is, that happens, and so the system is just not working. For good reasons, sometimes because people are tampering with it. We need to have zero downtime if you are going to run as a city. Ensure it is integrated with efficient and effect effective e-permitting system for development approval. Ensure it has a grievance redress system. If there's an issue, where do I post my grievance so that those issues can be dealt with? Free internet hotspots. 
especially in recreation parks, Nairobi, Uhuru Park, Central Park, Mishuki Park, to enable rapid access to information vital for economic and educational development in the county. It also gives a lot of information when people can go into a hotspot in certain places of the city and know where, what's, what's there in the city, what they can they go and see and see around. Compliance and enforcement implement the CAPS capacity assessment and rationalization of public service to address redundancy. The many ghost workers we talk about in the city and capacity issues. Institute civic education and capacity building for the public as a prerequisite for enforcement, which I talked about, that before any enforcement of any law, let's educate the public, then we can, we can, we can enforce. Institute strict uh, regulations on subletting and operations of city food markets and streamline operations without cartels and brokers. That's what kills our markets. And those who are real genuine people in the markets really don't get to do what they need to do. Reform the city ins inspectorate department through purchase of uniforms, workforce, rationalization, and retooling them. We saw Kerry the other day saying they'll, they'll put cameras on their people. I don't know what the county will do to make sure that uh, their, their county people, when they come to us, we, they, they are being seen, and we are also being seen, so that we are not the ones. Remember, there's always a give and a taker, so that that's not happening. Establish alternative modern markets for traders and hawkers to move on. Our people want to do business, young and old. Let's give them the markets. The markets are good for them, for their health, for their shelter, for their growth, because we can create value chains, even to export. Then for us as the buyers, we can buy um, healthy food and, um, and, and get um, what we need at, uh, at the right prices. That's really what the markets are for. But those, the, the, I, sometimes we really watch them. The rains come, they put a little um, plastic thing around them, you know. Then you also wonder where do they even go to the bathrooms, you know, because they're on the streets. You know, it's a health hazard for them and for ourselves. I would, you know, all the economic benefits, I wouldn't even go to that. Towards the end, competitiveness and jobs. Intervention areas of enhancing competitiveness and ease of doing business, improve state standards and value chains of city informal and manufacturing hubs, county government to leverage on the informal manufacturing hubs in Kariobangi, the light industries, industrial areas, Kamukunji area to promote cluster-based approach to improve their standards, enhance value chain participation. Again, why we need them in those clusters is because we can do this work and we can do together, uh, supporting SME development and the acceleration of jobs and wealth creation. Construction of industrial production go-downs for leasing at affordable costs. Working on a grant arrangement for refurbishment of existing production centers. Equipping the centers with modern technology, machines and equipment to support innovators. Integrating these Juakali groups in the county projects such as affordable housing projects. And we know one of the groups that was, was included in this, in, in the Kariobangi, and the lives that changed. I've given this example before for those who had, but I'll just mention here for the sake of um, our um, prospective governor, this group, because of being included in being able to supply the doors and the doorknobs and the windows, their lives changed. They were able to start, they, formed, they were able to form a proper association and form a company because they needed to go to the bank to get, to get money, to get a loan. And once they did that, they were the first occupants on some of those affordable houses because they could afford those houses. Their lives transformed. So what have you done? You've moved them. They're able to become, they started saying they're going to start going to Mombasa by SGR to take their families. They've, you've created a new, a new area of tourism. You know? So that integration for us is very important by getting them into, and this is just one case in housing. We can do that in different industries uh, that uh, the county can, can, can work with us. Promote digital and digitally enabled jobs in partnership with the private sector as a key job source for youth. You know, we are running the AJIRA program. We'd like to do more. We're doing basic, uh, we have uh, what we are calling constituency hubs. If we had a county hub, I think we could do a lot of young people into the digital and digitally enabled jobs. Market linkages for goods produced within the city, establish forums for trade meetings, partnering with stakeholders in trade exhibitions. I think the national government has done this. We need to do that as county you know, the trade exhibition so that we integrate uh, uh, the, the, the different traders. Entrepreneurship development, establish county business in co in co incubation hubs as co collaborative venture with national government developmenters and other stakeholders. We know about uh, IHUB and NILAB and others. We can do many more. And marketing of Nairobi National Park. I feel that's one of the things we lose. So we take it in as part of tourism of the national government. This should be a county marketing tool the only city in the world with a national park. Make it one of the things that 
identifies us as a city. As we said, counties need to be identified with different things. As we're talking about an economic and financial hub of Nairobi, this should be one of your flagship. And people should come here not thinking about going to Masai Mara, but thinking about going to the National Park. We had the history. I think some of the history we've not had about the park is people like EABL and where they started in the park and others. We can create those, and those can be marks. Like people are not seeing only animals, but they're seeing the history of what happened in that, in that park over time and becomes, and, and becomes a tourist attraction. Implement public-private partnerships. Um, um, as, as, as we need to do, and again, structured engagement. As I finish, improving social cohesion and cultural belonging. Most cities, people visit for the culture. You know, they want to go for concerts, they want to go to the theaters, you know. So Nairobi has a lot. We have the park, yes, and we can do. But the culture side of it, develop the Nairobi city value proposition. It's unique value proposition that becomes its unique selling point. Something like what KWDS did with the national parks. Establish happy events, festivals. I talked about Nairobi River and being the concert areas. Creation of national happy event hosted in all counties similar to the Samba Festival in Brazil, Mardi Gras in the US, that will call attention to the good things about Kenya. What is our happy event? as this county, as this country. Technology, additionally consider partnering with the private sector to develop digital reality tools to help increase access to cities' cultural programs. Today we have the private sector ones. I don't know how many get those uh, emails and, and texts. Where is the county one that tells us all the cultural events and where they're happening so that uh, we, ca we can go to them? County sports development, set aside funds to improve the set of sports facilities. We're glad to see what's happening. Gong Road, the, the rugby, sports, and other places, but we can do a lot. One of the things, and as I finish here, when you go to some of these countries with big football clubs, whether it's Madrid or Milan, uh, what is it called? Um, AC Milan and many others, their sports facilities, also tourism facilities, because what do they create inside there? You just don't go and see the sports facility, but within it inside, you walk through the journey of what those clubs have done and achieved. And it's such an attraction for tourists. Many of us, I would hardly go to a sports venue to watch a football match, but I go to those places to walk through the tourism and see the journey. You know, where did Messi, where, where he played, what he did, which, with the, the, the different sports and the, what they won and everything. It's interesting, the cups, the materials, and, and the development. It's fun to have that. Nyao Stadium can be our starting point before we even move to Kasarani, you know, and build a tourism center within it. Under it, you don't even need to build anything else. When you see, we all see the, the sports venue, but under it, all around it, inside, is a tourism center and walk in. Because we have, how do we remember Kina Kadenge and others? There's no way. Today's generation, if you ask them about Kadenge, they'll look at you and wonder, who's that? But we should be able to walk in there and see them and how they played and have all these clips of their videos and how they played. So in many words, you can see how our city can become. And I know you're not new. You're a marketer. There is nothing you cannot help us work together with you. And so I'd like the, uh, the appendix has a lot more details, which we'll pass to your team, so that when we start working on our NBA, we'll work together with you. But I'd like to welcome you now, Mr. Kampoli Kampigade, the aspiring Nairobi governor, to also tell us what your vision is. And do, do we have a meeting place with our vision at Thank all? Thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. The chair of the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, the executive of the Private Sector Foundation, I'm sure there's a foundation, um, all the directors of this great institution, which I have been a part of for very many years, distinguished guests, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. You know, when my team and I were preparing to come this morning, I told them I'm going to be amongst friends um, because I'm, I'm, I'm truly part of KEPSA. I was made by KEPSA. 
a big part of my 26 year history career because I've worked for 26 years. The first day I earned a salary after University of Nairobi was in January of the year 1996, up to March this year. <laughs> so I have been employed for 26 years, serving different organizations. And this year, I'm personally going to turn, I'm going to celebrate my 50th year. I'm going to turn 50 on, 20, on 21st of September this year, and I will be governor of Nairobi City County. <laughs> And there's a reason why I'm appealing to you to give me a birthday, my 50th birthday present as governor is what I'm about to tell you. But all what I came to tell, tell you, you have told me. All, sincerely, all what I came to tell you, Carol, you have told me. My team is sitting there, I think with their jaws dropped. Because all I can tell you is our campaign platform when I say Nairobi, you say to Navio Itaka. Let me see if you guys can wake up this morning. Nairobi? Navio Itaka. Nairobi? Navio Itaka. What you listened to Carol, our CEO, present this morning is the Nairobi as you want it. My role as Polycap and how I have succeeded in my career, rising from a salesman, a management trainee in Coca-Cola, very quickly to becoming a departmental chief before I was even turned 25, to becoming a CEO by the time I was 29, and being a chief executive officer of different multinationals was because I always knew one formula in life. I am hired by shareholders of this organization to serve a customer. And if I serve that customer, that customer will reward the shareholder sustainably over a long time. Now you'll ask what's the relevance of that to politics. Politics, the shareholders are political parties. And I think this is where many in private sector don't get it. Politics, the shareholder in the cycle of life, of governance, you called it the governance pillar, the social pillar, and the economic pillar. The governance of a country, the shareholders, the equivalent of shareholders in private sector in politics is a political party. And I've not heard Kepsa speak enough about operationalization of the Political Parties Act and pay attention to the construct, design, discipline, hygiene of political parties. Now let me tell you a secret about our ticket as Imiola Omoja before I really come to the content of my vision. Because shareholders, let me tell you how it works, and it works in clockwise. Shareholders simply invest in employees or management. Employees invest and serve customers. Customers reward the shareholder. That is how it works. That's how the world goes around. And if you dare go anti-clockwise, shareholders engaging with the customers, and who are the employees in politics? It's elected leaders. And then the people elected leaders appoint to be managers of government, empl people employed by the Public Service Commission. Uh, those are cabinet secretaries, PSAs, directors, the guys you go to. And the idea is to then serve the voter who's the public. So you see how the cycle works. But what has happened in Kenya for too long, and what happens to very many businesses that don't last long, and I can say that comfortably, when you see a business where shareholders combine with employees to steal from the customer, what happens? In politics, for far too long, the shareholder, who's the political party, has partnered with the government employees, the civil servant, to actually not just steal, rape from the public. Rape the public, that's a word, and I'm sorry for using those words. Carol, I'm going to tell you what we want to do before I really go to what the barrier to what we want to do is. The, but let me pronounce the barrier. The debate in this country is no longer about what needs to be done. Nairobians know what they want. And you have presented it to us. And I hope you have given me permission to innovatively imitate and innovatively steal. Yes. Uh, thank you very much.
I'm sure you have seen me walk the streets, wash toilets, serve beer, wash cars. In fact, the latest meme is I, there's something I deliver just in time. <laughs> but why was I doing that? Is to present to the Kenyan that here comes a man, and here comes an hour where the politician must come from his high road as a fellow who comes with a chariot, like the way Jesus entered Jerusalem singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. The politician is simply a servant of the people. And a city is about service. And the services you have pronounced to us, the services come. So the debate in this country is no longer about what needs to be done and how it needs to be done. That, that's not the debate. It's not even the debate in the Republic of Kenya. The, the biggest debate in this country, I pronounce to you, ladies and gentlemen, is who will do it. It is not what, it is not how, and it's not why it needs to be done. The conversation is about who will do it. So allow my presentation to be a lot more about who, the question of who, the governance pillar of Vision 2030. Because there's no debate about what needs to be done. Because, but here's the thing. For far too long, because I was part of KEPSA, and thank you very much for letting people know in. Um, I'm, I'm sure you'll get into trouble looking like you're campaigning for me, but facts are facts, and truth is the truth. Um, for far too long, we realized when I was in KEPSA that after the 2010 constitution, the Constitution demands the citizen to become an adult, not a child. There was too much parent-child relationship between government and the citizen. So government people actually call people watoto, wana inchi. That's why in Kepsa we decided, who, who's a child? Am I speaking to children tonight? Oh, this morning, sorry, I'm thinking it's the night. Eh? Am I speaking to children? I'm speaking to adults. So the 2010 Constitution has a basic doctrine, let me call it a doctrine, that the citizen is an adult and the government is an adult. The conversation is adult to adult. But for far too long, the citizen has carried himself in this country as a child to be pontificated to, to be told what to do. In fact, if you ring many people in government, you'll hear a ringtone. Sirikari's idea, Sirikari's idea. You know that, you know that lady from um, uh, Bundelangi. That, that we have moved because of the 2010 constitution. And I remember in Kepsa, that's why we came with the word, please don't call me a mwanainchi, call me a mwenyeinchi. That was the platform of that message. And what was the underlying real issue we were trying to bring out? The underlying issue we were trying to bring out is please, the citizen can no longer blame the weather. The citizen must change their clothes. If in your business, you're a weather, you're, there are people who blame the weather all the time. Like now they say, oh, it's too cold, so I'm in a bad mood. So why sweater? Eh? Oh, it's too hot. Um, remove your sweater. For far too long, the citizen in this republic, and I'm speaking truth to power now, you are the most powerful people in Kenya and on earth, not me because I've come to beg you to vote for me. I'm speaking to every Kenyan and every Nairobian here to say, on 9th of August, it's not a concept between red and yellow, between a dove that has combined with an orange to beat a wheelbarrow. That's not the issue on 9th of August. The 9th of August is, are you an adult or are you a child? That is what is on the ballot. And will you do jambo la mutumuzima Ama utafanya jambo la kitoto when you're in that polling booth on your own. The question is, who will do what you have presented to us? And who will do it quickly and most efficiently and most effectively? That is the question, political question of the year 2022. And that's why people are saying, oh, Igade has a very unique campaign. What unique campaign? Igade is celebrating blue collar work which is the foundation of a city. A city is made by waiters and waitresses. They are the heart of the cultural thing you have presented here. A city is made of matatu conductors, public sector conductors, ticket givers. A city is made of traffic controllers. 
a city is made up of you know people who do normal work but especially our media truly loves this image of the politician who comes down looking like a messiah i'm not a god and i love it that you continue to call me poly because i will never lose my first name my name is polycap igathe i come to serve you and that is why azimio la umoja is what i truly believe in it's a unity uh, to come together so allow me to spend more time talking about the who bit rather than the what and the how but just in case people think I've just come here without understanding the what, I also want to challenge you as Kepsa. I've told you I'll speak truth to power. And the people who brought the truth to power movement in the world are called Quakers. If you grew up in the Western Kenya, there's a church called Friends. Eh? Those people, if you go to the Friendship Center, they believe in speaking truth to power. And the most powerful people in Kenya are defined in our constitution, chapter one. Read chapter one if you don't read any other chapter. But I also want you to read chapter four, I'll tell you why. Read chapter one, why do I ask you to read chapter one? It says the power belongs, the sovereign power of the Republic of Kenya belongs to the people. And that's why sometimes you see a contest between politicians and civil servants. And civil servants must know their place. They are delegated authority. The politician is directing fusion of chapter one. And that's why I refuse to be a cabinet secretary. That's why I've refused to be appointed to chairman of this or chairman of that. That's why I have put myself in front. I have practiced what I preached in Kepsa, Wajibu Wangu, which was the second theme of Mkenya Daima. Wajibu Wangu. You, you know how the soloist, the Pokomo soloist says it in our national anthem? Yeah? It is the second chapter, I believe, of, of our national anthem. Yeah? Na tu jenge taifa letu. You guys truly take and breakfast. Na tu jenge taifa letu. Endi o wajibu wetu. Kenya ista hili heshima. Tuna ne mikono pamoja kazini. Kila siku tuwe na shukrani. What a beautiful prayer. What an amazing invitation to give thanks to God because we've taken responsibility. But the lawyers who wrote our constitution, the characters who wrote our constitution, the fellows who lost our constitution, led us down one tunnel. One critique I have of them, and it's a constructive critique, is they spoke too much about rights. The Bill of Rights is so heavy, which is fantastic. I don't want us to lose it. That's why every year used to be mapambano, mapambano, bado mapambano. You know, we are fighting for our rights. But hakiangu, the other side of hakiangu is wajibu. So Polika Pigathe has taken responsibility and said I will not complain about a politician anymore. In fact, it's Mukenya Daima that has led me to politics, if you do not know. Many people have no idea that I'm in politics because I was chairman of Mukenya Daima. Because I looked at the level of bandwidth of our politician, it is too low. It cannot download a picture or music. <laughs> the character, the competence, the capability of the average politician in this country is way below the national character, the national capability, the national competence. Because all of you love to sit in suits and discuss things at Kempinski. None of you is wanting to roll up your sleeves to come to the political scene and do what I am doing. Because you can't do what I am doing, why don't you start by voting for me on 9th of August? Can I, <laughs> can I please ask for your votes on 9th of August? Because you're all scared. You're Mickey Mouses. You have refused to take responsibility, but you continue to just say, it is that fellow, it is that fellow, it is that man. I'm, I told you my subject today is about the whole. Carol, allow me and chair. Flora, my very good friends, and Patrick Obath, and Vimal Shah, yeah? Nesbitt, all of you, please allow me to challenge you on one thing. Why don't you draw a scorecard? As a CEO, for the 26 years I worked, I succeeded and I continue to succeed as a CEO because I only used two tools 
to guide the organizations, I mean, and this is what I will do in Nairobi City County. Number one, my manifesto will simply present to you the scorecard of Nairobi, which I want you to hold me accountable to. I'm a responsible person. You've given me a long PowerPoint. I was sitting there saying, why don't you hold me to, why don't you convert it to a scorecard? That's what Igade understands. That is the leadership of Igade. What do I mean by a scorecard? One pager that's saying after five years, and will reveal it with you every year, and will only mark you red, green, amber. Green, red, amber. So it's, very, it's a traffic light system. Just how, like the way a city works, you want traffic lights, not a guy controlling. Uh, give me red, take this document, is that my constructive, uh, convert it to a scorecard. A scorecard is how you will know Igathe and Professor Kaloki and Rai Baba na Mama, Raila Molo Odinga and Martha Karua, the Azimiola Umoja, when we come to office, are we succeeding or failing in Nairobi? I just want one page that captures it and you should do it for the nation. I will take you to all neighborhood association. I'll take you to the informal settlements. They include it. Make sure it's publicly participation. We are asking for a scorecard. How will you judge whether the governor of Nairobi has succeeded or failed on an annual basis? When I walk into an organization as an executive, that's the first question I will ask of Nairobi City County workers. There are 15,000 of them, 350. Nairobi is a county that has existed to pay salaries, not deliver services. It gobbles up 24 billion shillings every year of salaries. But for what? It is a city short of water, caught in between the shortage of water and the stink of garbage and a sewer. Nairobi, it is, let's not, rem let me not go into the problems. I'm talking about the future. What, it is what it is. We have to deal with it. And let me stop blaming the weather. Let me change my clothes. My manifesto is about a clothes change. And the work of a leader is not to cry that cost of living is high. It's actually to reduce it and say I have brought it down. The work of a leader is not to come and pronounce problems, but to pronounce solutions. So the solution I'm asking of you, define a Nairobi County scorecard. And let it not be more than one page, it will be too long. Right? Number two, a scorecard is nothing, it's an output. Give us also a performance agreement which I want to sign with you. A performance agreement is the few things I will do as governor of Nairobi City County every day to deliver the scorecard. So if you like what I am saying, you can hire me after I'm finished as governor after five years to become a chairman or a consultant of your organization. If you're running your business without those two tools, you are flying blind. An organization must have a scorecard and a performance agreement. What is a performance agreement? The few things the governor of Nairobi does every day to deliver the scorecard. It's like a salesman says, I've been given a target to sell 20 crates of soda. So that's the scorecard. But what do I do every day to deliver the 20, to sell the 20? I have to walk in Zimmerman. Eh? I have to go to these kiosks. I have to see 20 customers a day. That's the performance agreement. Are you understanding the difference? Yeah. Performance agreement is what I do every day repetitively to deliver the scorecard. So allow me to present to you my performance agreement to you. So we see whether we're in concurrence. Because the performance agreement is what constitutes the Igathe Kaloki Manifesto. It has only three things. And the acronym for it is C. Because I think very many of us in Kenya, especially at the higher levels, who we have gone to school, we have the ability to look, but we are lacking the ability to see. To see, you bring more faculty. To look is just a physical thing, right? You can look at a lady, but you'll never see that she can be capable of being your wife until you see. <laughs> so seeing, you have to bring something else. So please remember the acronym C. My performance agreement with Nairobi is C. Number one is S. Society. Kustawisha Jami. That's what S stands for. Nairobi is a tale of two cities. Hope and despair. Where we are sitting is the land of hope. This, sit, this hotel is sitting in a title land. This hotel is sitting in a green place. Nairobi, when was it? It was Charles Dickens. Nairobi is a, is a tale of two cities. The flower festooned, leafy suburbs. 
and the deprived left behind in formal settlements. That's what Nairobi is. How many of us actually know the left behind in formal settlements? And I submit to you, the flower festooned, treed in, leafy suburbs have only five years to exist if we don't solve the problem of the, the desperation, the despair in the informal settlement. The informal settlement of Kibra, the informal settlement of Korogosho, the informal settlement of Madare, the informal settlement of Soweto Congo, the informal settlement of Gidogoro, the informal settlement of Kibagare, the informal settlement, um, which one have I left out? Mukuru, Kwajenga, Kwaruben, uh, and there are very many. The informal settlement of Kawangware. You guys will not be alive in five years unless you vote in a government that balances the equation. You do not have enough electric fences, you don't have enough guns, you don't have enough bullets. Unless you come off your high horses, vote for Igade and Kaloki to start the journey in the next five years of rebalancing the equation of hope and despair. And therefore, I'm presenting to you my first core card. The few things I'll do very well, and I'm calling it in Swahili so that I can be understood, Nikusta Wisha Jami. What are we going to do with society? My scorecard only comprises three things. We promise to deliver zero hunger. We promise to deliver decent jobs. And we promise to deliver well-being, which you called, and it's all captured in your beautiful presentation to us. I have summarized it into three measures of failure and success. Zero hunger, well-being, decent jobs under that theme of society. What is my promise as governor? What is my promise to my fellow colleagues in the private sector? What's my fellow promise to adults who live in Kenya? My promise is, how will we do it? I pronounce a package I call Linda Jamie. <coughs> Nairobi has 50,000 households that sleep hungry every day. Last night, there's more than 10,000 single mothers with children who could not feed their children. Those children slept hungry, and maybe the mother had to borrow water. When Raila Molo Odinga talks about Baba Care, other people rubbish it. These 6,000 is needed. I've just come from a job as Group Chief Commercial Officer of Equity. Therefore, I know a little bit more than my competitors, because they have never worked elsewhere. They've just worked in politics. One of the biggest projects I led, I was in charge of the Equity Group Foundation. I used to transmit to 9,000, equity bank alone, I'm not talking about KCB, cooperative bank, and other banks. In equity bank alone, I had 9,000 bank accounts that I used to help the government of Kenya transmit 2,000 shillings cash transfer from government through the Ministry of Social Protection to the household. So when I give you the number 50,000, you are not just getting it from a politician who's kissing, what, you're getting it from an individual who knows, a man who's telling you, I'm the man for you in Nairobi, but it's your choice on 9th of August. They sleep hungry, so what are we going to do with Linda Jami? This is my promise to you, because I don't want to give you a scorecard. Linda Jami is what I do every day, <laughs> repetitively, to deliver zero hunger. You get the link? <laughs> what will I do with Linda Jami? If you go on Gong Road today, Gong Road because of Kibra, or you go to Kiambu Road because of Gidogoro, where there is a slum, you'll always see a young kid coming to sell in Jugo Karanga. The, this city, we should be ashamed that all of us allow child labor. We should all be ashamed, all of us. My candidate as governor is to stop that child labor. What will we do? We want food packages, five kilos of rice, five kilos of that, because that is enough, five kilos of rice, five kilos of unga, five kilos, uh, some cooking fat. Basically, a house package, which we give to the mother, we don't give to the father. The mother is the one who knows the child. We will invite the mother to come to school every Friday in primary schools and ECD schools in informal settlements. 
and the mother will inspect the work the child has done and confirm that that child has attended 90% of the classes. You have to allow 10% because even us, uh, there is an allowance. And that mother will be given a food package to last her family another two weeks. Vote for us because we shall roll out Linda Jamie within the first 100 days we are in office. And we will afford to roll out Linda Jamie because we shall stop the revenue leakage at Nairobi City County. That's where the financing of this will come from. When I was deputy governor of Nairobi City County, we used to collect 100 million shillings a day of revenue. But what is collected in Nairobi is in excess of 200 million shillings a day. But what gets into the Nairobi books of accounts, I think the best number I've seen, even when I've done my quick research, is 42 million. And it's KRA collecting. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I telling you? It is a thuggery fest. It's a stealing fest. Nairobi is one big live crime scene, and it has been a crime scene for 40 years. Holy Cup is 49. The crime scene started when I was nine, when Margaret Kenyatta perhaps stopped being the governor of Nairobi. She, when Mar Her Excellency Margaret Kenyatta was the governor of Nairobi, Nairobi even won an award for the cleanest water in the world. That's how UNEP started to come. That's when we were positioned, I liked this positioning of the city, the green city in the sun. And I love chair where you reminded us that this is in Gare, Nairobi. This city was formed because of water and the railway. So we shall fix this city also with the water and the railway. And I'll explain to you. The future of this city is also water and the railway. So society, Linda Jamie is a promise we are making. I'm also making a second promise and I invite you to participate. The laws in Kenya allow you to offer money to charity. And when you offer money to charity, it's tax deductible. I will invite you, together with other people, to launch what I have registered as the Nairobi Foundation. The Nairobi Foundation will be an opportunity to aggregate the balance sheets and the P&Ls of all successful large corporates, medium-sized corporates, to come and do something in Nairobi. Stop doing your small little ag disaggregated things. I've done very many disaggregated As MD of Vivo Energy, and I can see my friend Waitito here who was my colleague in Vivo Energy. Vivo Energy is a company behind Shell in this country. Many of you may not know, but we had a 50-year lease when I was in that company, given to us to own close to 30 acres of Karura Forest. That was our private sports club. That is how Nairobi used to be exclusive. The city wrote, a 50-year lease, gave it to a private company with only 200 people to play golf, to, eh? to play sports next to the UNEP center. If you go there today, I'm the person who bequeathed those, 50, those 30 acres. I bequeathed that lease to the friends of Karura. And many of you may not know, I also chaired the Karura Forest Environmental Trust, KFIT. I'm a friend of Karura Forest. When you talk to me about not only do we have a national park, we are the only city in the world with 1,000 hectares, 1,000 acres of a rainforest next door to us. Literally, if you go to Sigiroi, you're in a rainforest. We have done nothing to use it to brand the city. If you go to the small building there, you will see a plaque called Vivo Energy. I presented it to London and I said, we must bequeath this back to the city. And it was being stolen. A few people wanted to make a hotel. Patrick Obath is here and he was a former MD of Shell, he knows what I'm talking about. Today, if you go to Karura, the sports grounds you play on, they became public because of Polika Pigathe. Because of MD of Shell. And we redonated it back uh, to the city of Nairobi. Now, but I'm trying to show you how extractive even large corporates can be. Why would you accept to be given 30 acres of land <laughs> just for 200 people to play in when Nairobi is so short? of green spaces. So that's why I'm inviting the charitable nature, the social investment of private sector to come. You now have me in Nairobi. I will not be accountable for the Nairobi Foundation. The Nairobi Foundation will be managed by the Nairobi Economic Social Council, which will be formed. And they will sit there and manage the Nairobi Foundation and make sure all charities in the world. I was so surprised how many people are looking to bring money here, but they have no honest, sincere person to give. Around the world, the VTOL 
foundation. Vitrol is one of is the largest company in the world. That, and I know these people. I'm on first name basis with their CEOs and their chairmen. I walk to London and I don't need an appointment. I can meet them. I walk to Hong Kong. I meet the chairman of the Hang HSBC Foundation. The chair, I go to Shanghai. I meet them. They tell me, what can we do in Nairobi? And I say, it is because we have low bandwidth politicians. Now you understand, I'm not attacking anyone. Low bandwidth is a very dangerous thing. Mr. Lungao, my primary school headmaster, used to say, little knowledge is very dangerous, Igathe. And we have allowed people of little knowledge to occupy positions of high responsibility in politics. And that's why we have failed. That's why my subject today is who? I was on the scorecard. Society, zero hunger, decent job, well-being. What are we going to do with decent jobs? Ladies and gentlemen, I appeal to you, your private sector alliance. Let me use the plight of a watchman, a friend of mine called Makoha. He is a guard in a company in the industrial area. I will not mention the company. <coughs> then there is a minimum wage stipulation in this country. It says, pay your people this amount of money. And this year, the president pronounced himself on the minimum wage. I can tell you in the security sector, which employs a lot of people from the Kisi community and the Luya community, majority of them are not being paid a living wage. We have far too many large corporates that are not paying people a living wage. You're paying people below. And you know, you're cutting your own legs because when you pay people a living wage, a decent wage, what do you do? You add your aggregate demand. Your order books automatically go up. If you pay somebody a salary below the minimum wage. What are we saying? We shall incentivize you to pay a minimum wage. I still remember Mohammed Mukras. You don't force people, you don't penalize people, you use economic incentives to get people to do the right thing. When I lived in Australia, when you drove on a highway and you were over speeding, you saw a sign saying, hey, speed gun in 100 kilometers. That time I'm driving at 150. So what is the <laughs> sign telling me? Come back to the right speed. We don't want to arrest you. That is how we shall run government. We want to, it's an incentive for me to obey the law. We are going to give large businesses and medium-sized businesses and small businesses and micro businesses an incentive to obey the law. How are we going to do it? I shall give an aggressive discount on the single business permit and on land rates for all companies that, and we will use e-government that pay minimum wage but we shall also enforce minimum wage through the single business permit. We shall enforce the minimum wage through the single business permit. We can't have somebody who wakes up every morning from Kibra to go to industrial area, comes back poorer than the way they went. That's how there's a lot of anger in the city of Nairobi. I uh, wish to apply that let's also keep, uh, find me new incentives to encourage people to pay the minimum wage. What am I saying? Decent jobs. But we shall also protect the large businesses. They'll not be harassed. They'll be given time to make sure that they ramp up. We are not coming to harass anybody. So there'll be decent jobs. Zero hunger, decent job. And what is well-being? You've spoken to it. Nairobi is the smallest high-density city. Nairobi has 696 square kilometers. <coughs> the city county of Nairobi, by the way, owns 532 hectares of land. City county of Nairobi. I'll come to land use. I'm talking about society. For well-being, we shall repair every single school sports ground and ensure that sports ground is then used by the local community over the weekend. We shall bring it to superb standards. <laughs> Secure it and bring it to superb standards. Those are enough grounds. And you can count the number of schools. At least in Nairobi, I know they're in excess of 250 schools. And while I'm at it, I'm going to leave at more than 1,000 primary schools. We don't have enough. We don't have enough early childhood education schools. And I'm also going to construct technical, vocational, educational training institutes. Three in every constituency. Three times 17, Hesabu Raisi, 51. Tivets. And while at it, start by employing 100 kids who'll go to the existing Tivets for training in every ward, so create jobs for 8,500 automatically, who will, will give an, an apprenticeship in the county. I want KEPSA to join me because I want these kids to also come for apprenticeship in your company. Then you hand them back to us. They go through 12 months, and they become the future of Nairobi City County. The average age of a worker in Nairobi City County is 52. 
in a city where the average age is 19. Ladies and gentlemen, you can improve my scorecard, but I've given you my vision. Judge me on whether ni Mr. Wisha Jami on three things. Zero hunger for anybody living in the city, decent jobs, and well-being. And well-being is about sports, culture, green spaces, and those things I've spoken about. I don't want to repeat your presentation, Carl. That's why I'm asking for a scorecard. The, third, the second thing I will do is around the economy, which I think is very close. And with the economy, we are saying to Taboresha Uchumi, how are you going to do it? Three, my scorecard has three things, Carol. The number one is brand the city. If you go to Cape Town, Cape Town attracts over, I don't know, 10 million visitors. And all they have is wine fields and a gray stone called the Table Mountain. Then they've created a lift to go up the Table Mountain. People come to see it. We have underutilized our assets. The Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, a hub. The central business district of Nairobi, amazing asset. Karura, Ngong, Uhuru Park, our weather. In fact, you put it very well. Our weather is the biggest asset, sun all round. Our geolocation, we are the eye of Africa. In fact, if you draw the map of Africa and you put an eye, you're right on Nairobi, right? We are five hours from every global city in the world. Breakfast here, dinner in London. Breakfast here, dinner in Buenos Aires. Breakfast here, dinner in uh, New Delhi. My friends, are you going to entrust this city? On, a f on what kind of fellows will we entrust a city that queens and lords over a population of 300 million people? Because Nairobi is the hub, heartbeat of Kenya, front porch of East Africa, nation centerpiece. Who will you entrust it on is the question on the ballot. The question on the ballot is not Igathe Sakaja. Is Nani Mtapatia Kazi to become the most important CEO of which city? Let me tell you, we headquarter Somali, we headquarter Somaliland, we headquarter Ethiopia, we headquarter Djibouti, we headquarter, I've said Ethiopia already, South Sudan, Congo, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, the whole lakeside, they come to hospital here. Their children come to school here. They come shopping here. When they have a weekend, they come dancing here. They come dating here. They come for honeymoon here. And the uniqueness of Nairobi, the only city of six million people, 600 kilometers from the sea. The management of, city, of the Nairobi city affairs requires somebody who understands. Look at all cities in the world. They are on the water. Lagos, Casablanca, Cape Town, Buenos Aires. All, everybody in the world lives at sea level near the water. Nairobi is the only city, one of the few cities that is inland. And when Uhuru Kenyatta and his government de logistics with the standard gauge railway, we say it's expensive because we don't understand the big picture. We don't see. We don't see. We have no epiphany. Because if you have 300 million people and you are the lord of it, you bring the logistics center you share the logistics center, you just have a port in Mombasa and you start to move inland. That's what, how did he define a road? Singapore, which is perhaps my favorite city of all places. He said if you're traveling in an economy class ticket of an aeroplane and you land at the airport in Singapore, the last person off the plane going to the farthest hotel in the city should take 20 minutes. That is a scorecard he gave the city managers. That was his definition. And then he asked who sits between our goal of 20 minutes from the time the plane lands to the time you get to your hotel. That was the standard. That's what I mean by scorecards. How do we hold politicians accountable? Zero. I have never seen a country where people earn a salary for doing nothing more than Kenya. That's why I resigned the time before. I will never take a salary for doing nothing. I promise you Nairobians, I promise you Kenyans, I promise you Kepsa here today from my heart. I will not take a salary for nothing. I worked in equity. I built the biggest balance sheet during COVID-19. I found a 600 bill, 500 billion balance sheet. I left equity with 1.2 trillion balance sheet. I found Shell had left Western Kenya. It had only 98 petrol stations. I left 202 petrol stations. I found Hako, a small company, employing 400 people. I left close to 1,200 employees, and we sold that company to a global conglomerate. 
I am a performer who behaves. I'm somebody who performs and behaves. I submit to you, I'm the man you need. I'm the man you want. But the choice is yours on 9th of August. And I'm giving you my scorecard. So on the economy is brand the city. On the economy is catalyze Biashara. The single business permit is truly going to become a single business permit. I'm going to aggregate the revenue lines from 126 to no more than a dozen. And one, we then we'll segment the business permit. Can you imagine a hotel and restaurant, how many permits? How many permits Kempinski requires? Food handlers, fire, single business permit. Why do you call it single business permit, then you create another 44? Why can't it just be truly single business permit? And it should be a QR code. There's nobody who enters your premises. The QR code is at the road. He just does like that, confirms that whether it's paid or not. We shall catalyze Biashara, but the biggest promise under catalyzing Biashara is a single business permit. But the most important one under Uchumi, and allow me to get stuck here, is to truly take Nairobi out of the jaws of capture by cartels and organized criminals. Nairobi is a big organized criminal field and cartel. What am I talking about? Guys, that's the real, that's the real question. I said my favorite chapter in the Constitution is chapter one. Let me add another chapter. My favorite chapter is also chapter four of the Constitution. Chapter four is the Bill of Rights. Chapter one is about sovereignty of the people. Chapter four is the Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm proposing something ballistic. I'm asking that we activate chapter four of Kenya's constitution in Nairobi, part four especially. Declare corruption a state of emergency. What does the law say? The constitution allows the president of the country, together with the governor, to speak and declare a state of, don't, let's not take, declare the state of emergency in Kenya. Let's call the state of emergency on corruption in the city county of Nairobi. The life of the Kenyan nation is today threatened, not by war, not by invasion, not by general insurrection, not by natural disaster, but by corruption in Nairobi. Corruption in Nairobi is threatening the Republic of Kenya. And if you bring somebody of questionable documents, somebody of ineligible capability, a party that is an aggregation and conglomeration of cartoons, charlatans, thieves, drug addicts, corrupt people, do not blame anyone else. I am asking and I'm pronouncing in my manifesto to parliament because I'm a mere governor. The people of Kenya, because the National Assembly and the government, and who Raila Molo Dinga has pronounced himself on corruption. And that's why I love Mother Karoa, Wangari Karoa, an icon woman on fighting corruption. And she has a partner called Mother Kome, who we are going to work with. Together with Poli Kapigadi and Professor Kaloki, we have no, I want you to support that we declare a state of emergency on corruption. Enact a law conferring extraordinary powers to make regulations that give extraordinary power to the governor and to the president to tackle this corruption issue. By the way, it's in the Constitution. If you doubt it, read Article 132, Subsection 4, Part D of Chapter 4 of Kenya's Constitution. And I'm not a lawyer. This is the laws. The problem in Kenya is not new laws. It's enforcing the laws we have. In Constitution allows the president to declare a state of emergency on a particular issue. We must do it in Nairobi. But let's not do it and look like we are coming to create a firing squad to kill people. I'm also asking that in addition to declaring the state of emergency, in equal measure I'll be inviting the Nairobi County Assembly and the National Assembly to pronounce themselves on an amnesty before we activate the state of emergency. We create an amnesty that allows restitution, recovery, and regularization. Do you know nine out of 10 buildings you see in Eastlands does not have a building permit? We don't even have a map. People build like this, then they go like this. There is no lighting. That's why rickets, the biggest prevalence of rickets is in the city county of Nairobi, which is on the equator. Lack of vitamin D is one of the biggest public health issues in the city county of Nairobi. Lack of vitamin D. People just build. You build. So you hear people talking and you say, why? But it's impunity. But what can we do as governor? Do I come and destroy all of them? Break those buildings? 
Let's create a room and a road to recovery and regularization. There are so many of us, including some of us in this room, and I'm sorry to say including myself, who have grabbed school land, especially churches. And you know, those guys are really hurting us because they've become a transmission mechanism for corruption. That's what the church has become. They have no moral authority anymore. They have become a transmission mechanism. We are stealing school land. You go to city primary, look. Go, to, go look. The headmasters of primary school are using school fields as parking lots and charging for parking. We are stealing health center. We are stealing sports ground. Do you know how the Muzungu had designed Nairobi? Every ward in Nairobi had a school sports ground, had a social hall, had a health center, had a, early, a primary, um, an early childhood education uh, school. It had a fire station. It had, every ward had that. Today, if you go there, where I live in Karura Ward, on the left, was a fire station, right opposite KTTC, which was grabbed. But the person who grabbed it lives and plays golf in this city. Now, do I go? And the institutions that should have stopped him exist. Do I go and kill the institution? Ladies and gentlemen, if we can give an amnesty on tax, we can also give an amnesty on corruption. But even in my church, and I'm Catholic by faith, we go and say confession. I confess, yeah? Yeah? like this, but we atone for our sins. Atonement is restitution, is recovery, is regularization. But it requires the best lawyers who are not founded in the technicality of the law, but in the spirit and letter of the law. I think one of the biggest challenges we have in Kenya is because our lawyers go straight to doing law. They don't start, study liberal arts or other things. So they don't think on first principles. Yeah? And we have too many lawyers, and I have no issue with lawyers. I, I just think as a professional, and even me as a professional, we should not be people who know too little about, too much about too little. We need to really move on and move on. And that's a promise. This corruption thing, if I don't fix it, you can consider what you have presented to me dead on arrival. The reason why this has happened is not because we don't know. The reason why Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta has become very unpopular in Kikuyu land is because he shut fronted corruption. So all corrupt people and their representative have moved to the yellow party. Actually, this election is not about any other tribe. The lawyers know how they will vote. The Kambas know how they will vote. The Luos know how they will vote. The Muindis know how they will vote. The politics is done in mother tongue, so don't get panic. The only people who are going to be tested, whether their culture, their beliefs, their character, the people on trial on 9th of August is my tribe, the Mugekoyos. It is a referendum on whether you Kikuyus truly believe in your own stomachs and ideas or whether you believe in the nationalist covenant that is Kenya. We are where our grandfathers were. Those who were led by Dedan Kimathi and Bildad Kagia from Kiburi House on Grogan Road to go and fight for independence and the land army and those who fought with the colonialists who till today we call home guards. Those who sold us out. Kikuyus have always had traitors and nationalists. There's nothing different. Now I am 50 years old, a grandson of the Mau Mau, and I'm saying my challenge is different. It's not a challenge of land. It's not a challenge of hardware. It's a challenge of software. Watch the software of the leader you elect on 9th of August, ladies and gentlemen. It is about who. I am making a promise to tackle city capture by cartels in my scorecard. So my three, my three goals under Uchumi is brand the city, catalyze Biashara, and tackle city capture. And I know they start, Jaindi Kisero wrote a beautiful article that corruption starts with budgeting. I want to go further and say corruption starts with elections. You accept money from the devil, you go to the office with your hands tied. You accept money to be fundraised by the wrong people, so please make sure that elections fundraising, which is part of political parties bill, is a very important chapter of our society. There are very many politicians today accepting checks from the wrong people. I want to finish. Let me finish. I think I've spoken too long. Let me finish. The last thing is about the environment. 
kuboresha mazingira yetu. We are. Nairobi has 500 land use. How do you have a city county with 532 hectares of land? And on that land sits 12,000 single dwelling units. 12,000 12, single dwelling units sit on 500 acres of land. By the way, if you're doubting me, go and drive from city stadium to Dunholm. That's the land I'm talking about. Poor land use. We have and zoning and urban planning. Land use and urban planning is a, is a commitment. Safety and security. Pollution of air, noise, and water. And bring, making the city climate smart. The challenge of our times, ladies and gentlemen, is poverty, disease, ignorance, and climate change in the city of Nairobi. And if that challenge is not won in Nairobi, that challenge will be won or lost in Nairobi for the rest of Kenya. And that's why I have put my candidature up. I'm, I'm, I'm my candidature with Professor Kaloki, my candidature as Azimio Laumoja, is to become the champion of public need and the, reduce, expand public need, reduce and el eliminate, eliminate to the extent possible private greed. Public need versus private need. Ladies and gentlemen, I may have disappointed you by talking too long, by talking too passionately. But you are the power. You are sovereign power. You are chapter one of Kenya's constitution. And even the lawyers went further and they were very prescriptive. They gave you chapter six, which you ignore, which institutions ignore. When institutions ignore chapter six, it's your job, you're the last line of defense at the election to do the right thing. And presented to you, and I have even gone to the community that matters the most. The swing vote in this country is Mount Kenya. That's where everybody is living there. That's where the swing, but when I say Mogekoyos, I know what I'm talking about. And politics is the tyranny of numbers, whichever way you compute them. There are million Kikuyus in Nairobi. You're the ones who will decide. How Nairobi looks, the governor of Nairobi will reflect who Kikuyus are. Who Kikuyus are. The rest of Kenya will know. And Kenya is not a tennis match between the Kalenjins and the Kikuyus for presidency. It is not. And there is a mammalian politician and a reptilian politician. Those are the people on the ballot on 20. You know how reptiles behave? They lay eggs, they sting, they are like, they run away. They don't even take care of their children. But mammals nurture. They are like Raila Odinga, you know? They nurture. You try. Very, five years, the man is still, he's like an elephant. He's a mammal, graceful, kind, proper. Even when you disagree with him, he says, well, come. His best friend, Miguna Miguna, writes the most rudest of books. The guy still sits with him. You know, he disagrees. Which part of this can't you see, especially you, Kikuyus? Which part of it can we see? It is time to unite the country, ladies and gentlemen, as I close. And we unite the country in hardware terms and in software terms. We are now united by road networks. We are united by electricity. We are united by access to data. In fact, there is no longer rural urban in Kenya. If you see a young woman dressed in Pasenga in Nyandarwa and one dressed in Westlands, Nairobi, they dress the same. They have the same access to information because the information superhighway has connected them. But the hardware is different. The software is different. This thing called corruption has eaten us to the bone. It is time to say a stop. If you believe corruption must stop, then you will vote Igathe, you will vote Raila Molo Dinga, you will vote Martha Karua, you will vote uh, Edwin Sifuna, you will vote Esther Pasaris in Nairobi, and lastly, you will vote an MCA with a name in the Azimio coalition. <laughs> that is what you will do. If you love corruption, then uh, let, and on the 10th of August, let us, the majority have their way, and the minority will have had their. If you did not like anything I said, I sincerely apologize. I did not mean to hurt you. I just meant to speak truth to power. And I am the fellow applying for a job to be governor of Nairobi City County. I'm competent, I'm capable, I'm confident, and I'm humble enough to be your servant. I'm, I am coming to be your servant. Go and look for votes for me if you are convinced. Go and tell your brother and your sister that this is the election of a lifetime. 
This is the time we truly show wajibu wangu. This is the time we truly do that. Because the conversation in Kenya is not about what needs to be done, or how it needs to be done, or why it needs to be done. The conversation is about who will do it. Who will do it? And this conversation, the people who have not decided the most, they are around Mount Kenya. And those are the ones. Because all parties have come together. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening to me. Vote for us because we shall change society, change the economy for the better, change the environment for the better. We shall make everybody see. We shall have a beautiful, wonderful city. If you forget everything I've said, just remember, vote for me, and your property will increase in value 10 times. Thank you for listening to me. Wow. Thank you very much, our key guest, Mr. Igade. The team in the room. Mumesikia maneno? Kawaidetu ni kuleta kila mtu aonge. Kisha tare sita mwezi wa nane. Mnajua kitu mnafaa mfanye, sindiyo? Mnafaa ni? Ta, tare tisa mwezi wa nane. Nilisema? Sita. Oh, sita. Oh, sidi alituko juu na sante. And what we've gotten from the two sessions, if you remember, and because we had had dinner with Her Excellency Salif Johnson, the message that is coming out from the two presentations, because it is about economic manifesto, it says, she guided and she told us that we are here because we share fundamental belief that poverty, illiteracy, disease, and inequality do not belong in the 21st century. We share a common purpose to eradicate these ills for the benefit of all. Isn't that the message that the private sector is saying and also public has said? Is that the message? So to us, to everyone, we say thank you. You have had the information. And as usual, as Mkenya Daima, you're told, kagua kabla kuchagua, msikize kila mtu, mpige kura, na mdumishe amani. Na kwa vile, pia sisi ni wa Kenya, na tunakumbuka jinsi tunapenda kupiga makofi, na pia kuna wimbo ambao tuko nae na tushangilie Kenya, mba tutaimba badae, na taka tupige makofi kwa lugha ya kiswahili. Na kwa kiswahili, tutapiga moja, mbili, tatu, nune, Na wale ambao na kumbuka jinsi tukua tunapiga makofi wakati wa enzi zile, tutafanya hivu leo. Na kwa kawaida hatutafunga kwa vile bado tunendelea na mkataba wetu. Na badai ni tamuita mhandisi mku, anitua James Mwangi, atakuja kutendeleza na maswali. Naona ingino wanafanya hivi? Eh? Some of you are shaking, right? Okay, let me switch back to English. Allow me, let us clap in Kiswahili, and because we, are, we all remember, let us go moja, mbili, tatu, fungua, amuachilie tu wapo wapo, msifunge bado. Let me invite engineer James Mwangi to take us through the plenary session, and I'll request the presence of the team from Mr. Poli Kapigade, please to be ready for the responses. Just give us a few more minutes, we have questions, and then we will be wrapping up with a vote of thanks later. Thank you. Karibu engineer. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't that heavy? Very, very heavy. I'm still internalizing it. And to make it worse for me, I come from that region. <laughs> that on 10th will be, uh, uh, let's just say, assessed differently. But thank you very much, uh, Polycarp, always a pleasure. And there's nothing that beats honesty. You know, telling things as they are and making us understand. Thank you, Polycarp, for also simplifying the message. And I think uh, in terms of us uh, deciding what to do, we know what the weighing scale, what are the issues on the weighing scale on 9th. So this is our chance now, ladies and gentlemen, including those who are online, to perhaps we'll take a few questions, maybe to get clarification. Pengine imekuan zito sana, and you want it diluted a little bit so that you can be able to understand 
and make that very important choice on 9th. So I'm going to allow uh, a few questions from the floor. We will also not leave behind those who are watching virtually, so if we could also have those questions queued. But I would like to start with questions from the floor, and we'll take a few. And I can see the hands are up. Polycap, this has stirred a lot of interest. The hands are up. I can see on this side, and I'm liking this. Uh, many questions from the young people. And we know that they make up a very big part of the population. So do we have microphones? And I think uh, um, perhaps Polycap, uh, um, you would maybe nearby. We, you, you take note and then I will be giving you a call. And to make this efficient, um, please say the question, uh, avoid presenting a paper. <laughs> Just ask the question so that we can also get a direct answer. And I'm going to start on this side. Can we have uh, those who have raised up their hands? We all have. Uh, uh, our boy has already even taken up the microphone. I can see ladies at the back there. So let's have our boy. There's a lady at the back there. Aha. Uh -huh. Hey, hey, hey. All right. We're going to have to manage this because of time. So let's start with the ladies. One, two, please. And then the gentlemen are coming to you. Very quickly, if the question has been asked or is similar to what you want to ask, it's okay. We will see polycarp also some other time, so let's not be repetitive. Wamboi, go. Uh, thank you very much, Engineer. My name is Wamboi Barire. I run the Beat and Trade Association. My question is on the licenses. You asked how many do, uh, for example, can please can pay? I'll tell you, a supermarket pays 25 licenses. My question is, We've seen different regimes. Kidero had his system, Sonko had his system, NMS now has its system. There's always a change. And coming from the business sector, you realize the importance of continuity. Are we going to have an other system, or are we going to establish an system that come the next regime will be continuous? And a good example for me, mentioned earlier, is uh, the sustainability of a system is very evident on the ground. NMS did an excellent job in the first 100 days to clean up. But in the 110th day, we were back to the beginning because of a system that is not sustainable. So how do you intend to create continuity okay. so that we're able to sustain business? All right, thank you very much. That's the last person I'll allow to present a paper. <laughs> but I understand one boy. So the question. So let's have the lady at the back. Please say your name straight into the question, then we'll have the next lady there. Okay. Please, go. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Winnie Maru. I'm from the Kenya Association of Women in Tourism. I'll go direct to the point. How do you intend to do the MCAs and their interests? Because a lot of the governors who have left, that was the problem. Thank you very much. Lady, your name? Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Ngao. Uh, representing Sanaji, Police and Advocacy. My question is in regards to sanitation and the informal settlements. What are your plans for sanitation, particularly in informal settlements? And what is your role? What is the role that you um, see private sector playing in implementing some of those uh, plans? Thank okay, you. those sound like very quick uh, answers, Polycap. Maybe can I add two more, uh, Polycap, so that we do quickly? Right, the gentleman, this is your chance. Uh, hold on a minute, I can, hey, hey. there's something Polycarp has said today because I can see the questions are coming. So let's have this good gentleman, and then the gentleman at the back there, and then we will get to you just in a moment. So two more questions, then we allow Polycarp, and then quickly, short questions, and then we now also take care of those who are online. So, proceed. Good morning, my name is Ngaja Mubaya. I've had the pleasure of interacting with the gubernatorial aspirant before. So to do what you say you're going to do, how are you going to get buy-in from you? Because youth is the largest population in this county and country. Thank you. Thank you. Very short. Crisp. Yes, my friend. Uh, good morning. Uh, Monty Peter is my name. Uh, my question to Gabe, because he has mentioned everything else, but there is one critical area that uh, he did not mention. Uh, the thorn in the flesh of most of Nairobi, especially the people who pass at the street of Nairobi, is the crook breakdowns that 
that to park your car and by the time you are coming, your car has been taken away and then you don't know even where to follow your car. I don't know what you're going to do. Either the county will come up with the breakdowns that you can know this belong to the county government or NMS or we allow the same group of people to continue taking and stealing from good Nairobi people. We are organized and why we work on a structured engagement. And people say, why don't you just meet the We are organized and why we work on a structured give it to Governor Kidero. Governor Kidero contributed, and he even brought a lot of technology behind it, but the sustainability of it, for him, but it's because of exactly what I said. If you are monitor, the only sustainability to any system is because there is a scorecard that is relevant to the people, and a performance agreement that is relevant to the people. Just like in business, a scorecard relevant to customers, a performance agreement relevant to customers. I come back and that is what I'm bringing to Nairobi City County. I'm going to form what is the Nairobi City County Corporate Services. It will include legal, HR, finance, the corporate body. Then there'll be Nairobi Health Services, Nairobi Environmental Services, Nairobi, the, the executing agencies. So we are going to reform, retool, rejig, and create a fit for purpose organization for service delivery, essential service delivery. And that is what we'll do. I'm not going to recreate anything. I will take the best that has been done in the past and lift it and make it sustainable. I am not the type who comes and rubbishes everybody who came in front of me. I pick up from where, I take their successes, and I fix their failures, and I move on. That's my philosophy. Uh, and that is what we shall do. But single business permit will mean exactly that. Well, supermarkets will only have one, even if there are multiplicity there. And then we'll also say, here is your annual single business permit rate. You can pay it daily, hourly, monthly. We'll give you options of paying it uh, in terms of also paying, especially for the micro small entrepreneur because they can only pay uh, as you go. Um, but we'll also really fix the revenue system. Because Nairobi, you can't believe we have almost 2.9 discrete properties in Nairobi. Do you know how many properties pay rates? But they don't pay rates because they don't get services and they're not regularized. Only 120,000 properties pay rates in Nairobi. It's like a family of 3 million people, but it's only 120,000 who bring food home for people to eat. Too few people carrying uh, too many people. That's my answer to, to your question, and I welcome any other ideas you have. Because we are going to run Nairobi with public participation. We'll activate the Neighborhood Act. I'll give you an example. My dream is that there is not a single invoice that we do three-way matching or LPO of Nairobi City County that will be signed off unless the residents association signs and says the pothole was fixed, the storm drain was covered, the estate association or you business association, that is how we shall do it. We shall get you involved uh, part and parcel. Mujai, I think the other question is from Winnie, MCAs and their interest. What is really eating the MCA is because the Nairobi County Assembly has become the Nairobi County Executive. There is going to be a Chinese wall. Parliament oversights, executive executes. Parliament oversights, executive executes. And if you look, Nairobi has 42 MCAs who are Kikuyus. The 43s are others in 2013. 45 are Kikuyus last time when I ran. 40 are others, other tribes. You know, I, have beef, I don't have beef with the Kikuyus, I'm a Kikuyu myself. I just want Kikuyus to really take themselves to what we call a Moshemanio, a meeting. <laughs> Nairobi has 45 MCAs. I can tell you, because I like to speak mother tongue, because this is politics. These 45 M Kikuyu MCAs are controlled by three Somalis. That's a fact. There is a cabal. The capture is too serious. 
Even yesterday, they were doing things that are completely illegal and illicit, as late as of, of, of yesterday. Now you wonder, my tribesmen, this money, what are we going to do with it? We, the political culture of the Kikuyu used to be lion-hearted. It has now become vulturistic and hyenaistic. The lion only eats the animal. It's a predator. But we, we are killing one another. We are tearing at one another. We have a few people who have become way too greedy. If you look, go to the county now, the invoices being paid are being paid to few people of one community. Salaries are not even being paid. The Nairobi city worker is the most demotivated. Let me tell you, in answering your MCA question, I am taking over a county with debts of 85 billion shillings. When Sonko and I took over, we had 58 billion debt. I don't know how it has hit 85 billion. We don't have a fixed asset register. Nairobi city is not a going concern. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot give this job to somebody without the competence to get it done. I will deal with MCS politically. I told you the political parties are the shareholders of politics. That was a loaded statement. The most disciplined political leader in Kenya who has an organic following, a relationship politics, is Raila Molo Odinga. All the rest, I can argue, have a transaction of following. People follow you because you pay them money. You mobilize. Eh? Only Raila Molo Odinga has discipline. When he says this goes in ODM, it goes. Kalonzo, when he says this goes in Waipa, it goes. Uh, uh, Wamalwa says this goes in DAP, it goes. Um, uh, Upia uh, says this goes, it goes. Waipa says this goes, it goes. But Jubilee, Uhuru says this goes. Fight starts tomorrow. What's wrong with you, Kikuyus? And on 10th of August, the lawyers will go to their party. The lawyers will go to their party because that's how we have organized ourselves and there's nothing wrong. Eh? The campers will go to their party. Kikuyus, where will you go? We must aggregate. Politically, we must organize ourselves. And that's where we shall, control, we, that's where we shall manage the MTAs, through political party. And that's why Azimio Laumoja is the wiper way, the NAC Kenya way, the, TNA, uh, the Jubilee way, the ODM way, the UPIA way, the DAP way, Azimio Laumoja. It's like this ball, dynamic, moving. And that's why Kenyans must elect that unity, that political unity. If we don't answer the political question, we will forever be in debates about the economic and social question. And we have political party organization. Azimio Laumoja is the best thing after sliced bread. Sanitation and informal settlements in Nairobi. We are going to bring a system and get inspired by the Japanese called Jokasu. Jokasu is where your waste soil, night, night soil treatment is done. And we shall do it under the Nairobi Foundation, especially in informal settlements. You've asked a powerful question. Many people don't know that five out of 10 Nairobians still go to toilet on the long drop. Even people in Runda, Spring Valley, and Karen, they have sophisticated long drops because that is what a septic tank is. People don't flush toilets. If you don't allow a citizen to go to the toilet with dignity, what are you doing? Chris Kirubi taught me one thing I'll never forget. If you go to an organization or a company or a hotel, first of all, go to the toilet the workers go to. If it's dirty, you don't need to be told the quality of that MD. I call it the toilet test. I used to use it in, even in Shell. If you go to a dirty toilet, that's why I was cleaning toilets. Also, in addition to tell the cartels, we can take shit and we can deal with it, you know? Many of them thought it was a joke. We can clean it up, and I'm not afraid to do so. Because I'm a Kenyan and don't see anyone else, it's my responsibility to clean after myself, rather than expect another uh, other person to do. The MCA, so what am I saying? Vote for the entire MCA and Azimio and we shall. And I know I'm, I'm, I'm running late because I'm going for a meeting with MCAs. And you know they're my bosses too. Um, they will be my bosses from an oversight point of view, but we shall work. We are going to be unified. We shall work with the whips. There is a whip, there is a majority leader. I don't know whether you see it in America. Even when they walk, they statecraft. The president, the speaker, the leader of the majority. That is the political order. It's like a company. There is a chairman, there is a CEO, and there is management. That protocol and statecraft has been lost somewhere in the middle. You find a fellow who has nothing to do challenging the party leader. What business do you have challenging Raila Molo Odinga? 
Of course, we have organizations. We have the delegates conference. We have these other ones. But this political indiscipline, and it is fired up and financed by corruption. That's why corruption in Nairobi must be declared a state of emergency. There's a lot of um, connection, trunking that is going on on, on on sewer. At the end of my term, all neighborhoods in Nairobi will be connected to the public sewer system. And we shall recover land stolen and protect the land. The lowest part in Nairobi is Roy. That's why the solid waste flows there. But you know all that land had been stolen and people were growing trees there and doing farming. You know, that's why Nairobi cannot be given to a farmer. <laughs> this in Ishamba Lamawe. <laughs> You know? The third thing, the fourth thing, Degwa, lovely to see you. Youth buy-in. You know, Degwa, let me tell you, youth is very trans... Uh, it's Gatia, 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 Muhoya. You know, this country, the average age is 19. In fact, the biggest mistake we make is to create a ministry of youth. Because the country is young. But young people are adults. Stop begging. Change your clothes. Come and run for political office. I'm very happy to see very many young people running for political office. Occupy. In fact, one of my competitors for the seat of governor is 25. I'm really excited to see him put up his hand. The buying, nobody will ever, you will not, you are not a special interest group. The special interest group in, in, the, in, in the economy is PWDs and women. Women, we have, those are special interest group. The youth, you are the population. You are the population. Uh, the youth, you are the population. And the buying will come. Young people, you've been always, you are the most powerful people. You're the most powerful people, so we really need, but the buy-in is by making sure we have more young people in decent jobs. And you heard what I'm going to do with the single business, incentivizing businesses to make sure minimum wages are there too. Um, then there is uh, Peter on harassment. Peter, I completely agree with you. We have to relaunch the Nairobi City County Inspectorate Department. Relaunch it. Completely launch it. New uniform, new hardware, new software. It's just a simple theory. And also get rid of colonialistic, extractive laws and regulation. Because if you ask a Nairobi City County Askari, he'll give you a law he's working to. But those laws were created to prevent these MQQs, who I'm inspiring, to come to the city to work. That's why you had to paint your door. To paint your door, change your door knob, you need to ask the guy in City Hall. That's a colonial law. It's to make sure that they know where you are and where you have come from. But because it started to serve the interests of the Ascari, because he can threaten you with it and make some money, it's remained there. We are going to get rid of colonialistic, exact, extractive laws. That's why one of the most important, one of the most important jobs in my government will be the Attorney General of Nairobi City County. Has to be a Top-notch, smart person, not somebody who just tells me, I contributed to your campaign, therefore give me a cabinet seat. You know, that's how they do it. Yeah? It has to be top-notch uh, person. And, and uh, to, uh, together, so we will relaunch the Nairobi City County Inspectorate. Um, I think I've answered all the questions that you've uh, put before me, and I really thank you for, for, uh, for the questions. I can, if you want me to take another round, yes, I will. Just thank one you. one more round. All right, I know we are running uh, short of time, and uh, like Polycap says, he has his bosses um, uh, who, who also want to hear from him. Uh, we have our chair, uh, we have the lady at the back, we have this gentleman, and we have that. Please allow us to cut it there because I also have additional online questions. So Polycap, um, the last round uh, of questions, again, no paper, uh, just ask the questions. Let's, let's start with you, you had the mic. Uh, your name, please. Uh, my name is and ben David. David from Millennium Speak. Okay. Thank you, incoming governor. We have no doubt that you're the man for the job. So my question is, uh, you've well said that 500,000 out of Nairobi's 5 million population is uh, unemployed and 70% of them work in the informal sector, sector for those who work. So what's your plan, not only to create or formalize this sector, but also provide linkages to the global economy, because that's where we're heading. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And then we'll have the lady at the back, and then we'll come to you, gentlemen. Let's have the lady, and then 
will help the gentleman. Okay? Again, just a question, please. Your name, please. Thank you. My name is uh, Mary Gesare. I chair Nairobi Region Camp uh, Center. My question to my incoming uh, governor is, you've told us you are celebrating your 50 years in September. Very good. Our sewer line is as old as uh, your age. It has never been improved. I don't know what plans you have for Nairobi to uh, develop the sewer line. And uh, on uh, North Airport Road, there's no sewer line. Thank you very much. Okay, I, I, I did recall some mention about a trunking system that he wants to do. In fact, I think, if I'm not wrong, he has promised by the end of his tenure, the whole of Nairobi will have a sewer system, but again, he can reconfirm it. So thank you very much, uh, Madam. And uh, the gentleman in front there, before we come to the chair of uh, CAPSA. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Jimmy Kiberu. And uh, thank you so much for a very, very powerful presentation. My question is on zoning. I got excited when you said that our papers are going to grow in value almost 10 times. But anyway, the question is, um, what are you going to do concretely to rezone Nairobi? This morning as I was coming, I saw Gatun's Hospital, for example. A few meters down the road, you had a tall, towering apartment complex. I think it's built by Chinese. It's about 45 floors. And that's the general trend all around those areas of uh, Lavington, Variacade, and those areas. I mean, it's really terrible. Dry clubs have invaded residential areas. I just want you to speak to yourself about concretely what you want to do about zoning. Okay, thank you very much. And then let's have the chair of uh, CAPSA. Um, Pretty similar to that. Um, it's around uh, neighborhood associations. You know, they, 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 there's always this thing you want to have. Um, they have to be participants. They have to agree to what is happening. But even if the neighborhood association says no, we see the developments going up. So they've been requesting for MOUs that are recognized in law and um, just to find a way around the town planning. Thank you very much. And then allow me to pull up uh, just three more here from the online so that we don't seem uh, like we're discriminating them. This is from your good friend, Bill Lay. How will Polycarp utilize NMS and Namata? Okay, so I think that will be a straightforward answer. Then uh, also from somebody who I believe you have served uh, in Kepsa with, Lucy Karume. Karume. Do you have a plan to partner with neighboring counties in your zoning manifesto? And I think that is also uh, pertinent. And then the last question uh, from a Mr. Karanja Njoroge. What options will you support for people mobility in Nairobi? It may have been captured a little bit under caps and what have you. So, ladies and gentlemen, allow us to stop there and give uh, Polycap a chance to answer those before we bring uh, this session to a close. Welcome. Wow, amazing questions. Clearly, Nairobi to Navio Itaka. Um, let me start with NMS. Um, uh, from from Billy, he'll be happy that I answered him first, <laughs> and because he's a real good friend of mine. Um, we are definitely. I am a great celebrator of NMS. NMS stood in to fill the gap. Um, Nairobi was being disbanded as a county, and it, if it was not for the benevolence of Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, even the MCAs you asked about would not exist. NMS is the bridge between Nairobi County, which was extinguishing and Nairobi County, which we are taking over. And they have done a hard job under difficult circumstances, and I celebrate General Buddy and the work that he has done. Um, uh, the Nairobi Metropolitan NMS is not, was, was a creature of the law, and it will be extinguished by the law. And the extinguishing is happening, I think, around November, if I'm right. So as we take over office on the 10th of August, because you look really convinced that you want sincere, honest people to serve you, we, we will take over the instruments of power. Our assumption of office will be both from the governor, High Excellency Governor Kananu, and also from <coughs> general body. And it's a creature of the law. There's really no contest about it. Uh, the law will take its cause, and even if I'm governor, I'm a human being, I'm subordinate to the law, and that is what will happen. And thank, thank God for NMS. NMS, by the way, just so that you don't think I'm a man of platitudes, 
dug 140 boreholes in informal settlements during COVID-19. That is how a massive disaster would have occurred. Because Nairobi consumes a million liters of cubic liters of water, Nairobi only has capacity to supply 500,000 cubic liters of water. When I leave Governor Nairobi in five years, the supply-demand equation will be equalized. The supply of water will exceed demand. Under my, what Uhuru has done to electricity in Kenya, I will do to water in Nairobi. I will leave excess water supply to the city county, working with Raila Amolo Odinga and Mother Karoa, who's the champion of water reforms in the Republic of Kenya. Many people do not know that. So uh, let me put that. Gesare, really, I think your question on sewer lines, I, I absolutely answered. There's a lot of sewer works going on. The biggest fight you saw in the national government, and actually what separated, I think, uh, Jubilee was a piece of land in Roy which was grabbed that belonged to sewer treatment works. So sewer lines are being done, work is being done. I promise you, Gesareb, judge me when I leave office in five years, Nairobi will all be sewered, 100%. That's my promise. If you notice, I'm running away from 100 days promises. The only 100 day promise I'm making to Nairobians is I will motivate and create a fit for purpose organization for essential service delivery because it does not exist. Workers are not paid, I'll start paying them. They don't have job description, they will get. They will get a scorecard and they'll get a performance agreement from me. I'm going to clean the offices and remove stoves from the offices. And that area around City Hall will start to look like a place of a functional office to serve the people of Kenya. Not a place to just uh, do, do what they want. And um, our Nairobi City workers have been forgotten for far too long. I will pay attention to them. My first attention in the first 100 days is to construct a solid cabinet, a solid executive, and really motivate and get to understand so that in 100 days I'll be ready to serve and also take over from enemies. That's my 100-day promise, um, really, because I have to start from there. Uh, 45 floors, we must densify Nairobi strategically. I've told you, we, our land use is very poor. We are we must densify sustainably and strategically, and urban renewal must happen. But Nairobi will be the capital city of clubbing, entertainment, and concerts. There's nothing wrong with drinking and dancing. There's nothing wrong. The old profession exists in every city, and we shall continue. If you go to New York, we all go to party on Times Square. Yeah? If you go to Hong Kong, Westlands, Electric Avenue, I will be lit, it will look like Times Square. Koinange Street, will, you'll all assemble there for theatre, plays. Our Broadway will be Koinange Street. There's a, it's already started. There's a Lyons Fonse, there's a lot of theatre. You'll come and watch plays and then go for dinner. I'm going to remark CBD. Central Business District will be remarked. Westlands will be part of CBD. And CBD will be pedestrianised. My hope is in five years by the time I leave office, there'll be a pavement building revolution in the city of Nairobi to pedestrianize. You leave Don home and come to Nairobi city county walking with your shoes. Because Don home is not too far. You leave Runda and come to CBD walking. By remarking CBD, I'm hoping I'll convince the member county assembly that in CBD buildings, first floor, second floor, third floor, fourth floor and fifth floor will be retail centers. Markets, barbershops, salons, bars, shops, and then upstairs people can live, they can become apartments. The richest people in the world live in CBD. I want you, to, the older people, to come and live in CBD and enjoy the energy of the young people because it's safe for them. And hospitals are there. We want people to leave the suburbs and come and club in CBD. What a shame that today CBD, the highest investment per square meter in Kenya, only works between 9 and 5 p.m. We are crazy. We all assemble all into CBD, we 8 million of us by lunchtime, then we start running away. While in the evening what should be taken on is hawkers, people selling, it should be a bastion, and then delivery and loading zones for supermarkets. We'll create loading zone times. I have to convince the taxi drivers who have taken over parking lots in CBD that we are going to become a pick and drop zone within CBD. Uber drivers, there'll be pick and drop zones. Uh, border border pick and drop zones so that CBD is just pick and drop but you s pedestrianize we cannot have that the same way my father came to Nairobi with a bus called Geteo 
oh, okay when we enjoy oh, in 1963 he's dropped in the same place even today we decant everybody south of tomboya if you go to tomboya i want to see high rises my my relatives the rwadia group who come from Onjerere, they came with Kayo and Moenjoyo. Those were the buses. And I want the Nairobi city to face Nairobi River, not to face away from Nairobi River. Michuki Park to be extended. To remove, to start facing the river. That's my promise in five years, that you'll start to see Du Bois Lane, Nyamakema, Grogon, start to go up because they're inspired and because they're creating retail. And you know, if we create those first five floors as market spaces, young people get jobs. Eh? Ngatia? Young people get jobs. That's my buying. Women get jobs. Because women, and also make it very safe because it's the most lit. The other thing is we shall light Nairobi. Just lighting. Absolutely lighting. You come to Nairobi, it will shine upon you like Dubai. <laughs> Shines upon. Because we have no... Can you imagine a country that has excess power that it needs but the city is dark? How crazy is that? The city is dark, but the country has more power. We are generating more power than we need. Why are we not lighting everywhere? Especially the informal settlements. Mgala Muwe Hakiyake Mpe. The person who brought the plight of the informal settlements to the political scene is one Mike Mbuvi Songo Kyoko Wakivanguli. That is the man who made us realize politically the problem of the informal settlements. I celebrate him. I celebrate him. And the work that's going on in informal settlements is because he even started his own service. That's how we became friends when I was MD of Shell. I started fueling his trucks to take water there. But now there is water because there are boreholes. Gen um, what am I saying? Life in politics is not politics is not a gladiator sport where you hate the people who came before you. We forgive one another and we move on united and we celebrate the good things people have done. And we forget the bad things they have done. We give them an amnesty. And we move on. The country must heal. Yeah? The country must heal. But the mountain Kenya people must allow Kenya to heal. Then uh, Lucy Karume partner with um, Partner with neighboring countries. Lucy Karume, what a beautiful question. That's why I'm reading your because I remember it was a beautiful question. If you give Nairobi Azimio La Umoja, please vote for an Azimio La Umoja governor in Kiambu. Because we want to connect the railway from Gidurai through Kiambu, through Tatu City, which I gave a license when I was chairman of Special Economic Zones Authority. Go and check there. I was a chairman. I am the one who gave Tatu City the license. Yeah, there's another license which was given in Eldoret, but there there's only wheat. Nothing has happened. But Tatu City, there's work going on. Now you understand why I'm telling you, don't vote that side. <laughs> the, the, ta, I gave Tatu City the license. If you go, we want to make a railway that will touch Tatu City, go all the way to, uh, to Limuru. Then we have a loop line, the great train loop line. We can't do that when I have to go and beg a guy who's into a wheelbarrow. <laughs> I want somebody who's into a dove, peace, and somebody who's into an orange, COVID-19 disease. An orange is a COVID-19 medicine, vitamin C. <laughs> Kenyans, you have been offered vitamin C and a, and a peaceful dove. And you are choosing an orange, and you are choosing a wheelbarrow? You people of Mount Kenya, you want a wheelbarrow? Manure, hard work, hard labor. You are ignoring it? You want it vis-a-vis -vis the other side? That's the question. That's the question on the ballot on the 9th of August. And then, uh, so, Kiambu governor, Azimio, Kajiado governor, Azimio, because we are making a railway line also from Riruta going down to, uh, um, to Kiserian and um, what do you call that town? Ongata Rongai. Give us Machako's governor, Azimio. Give us a Machako's governor, uh, Azimio. That's the metropolitan area. And Lucy Karume, your question is loaded. 10 million out of 50 million Kenyans live there. 20% of our population lives in the metropolitan area. Kibaki had a vision in appointing Ministry of Metropolitan Services. It was that inspiration that enabled us to create the metropolitan service. That's where everybody lives. I've been in fast moving consumer goods. I've sold every FMCG product on earth. Petrol, beer, soda, wine, cosmetic, rice, chocolates. I've sold everything. And I can tell you, 60% of all fast-moving consumer goods, they go into that area. That's where they are supplied and sold. 
And that's why that area inspires the rest of the nation. The way we behave in the metropolitan area is the way everybody behaves. And we need to train so that the people of Kiambu can stop bringing red soil into Nairobi. In five years, you will see Nairobi so clean. There'll be no, it will be so clean and shoe shiners. We have to make that area look beautiful. And I'm saying that with a light-hearted, on a light-hearted uh, matter. Then uh, the last question is people. The last? Neighboring associations. Na neighborhood associations. I'm going to manage with you. I'm speaking to you. Actually, it's not an ask, it's a dictate of the law. We are supposed to activate village councils at what level. And village councils are allowed by law. But your work is oversight, not executive. Oversight. And our laws are so beautiful. Although I was almost critiquing lawyers sometimes, there are some laws that are beautiful. We, there is an egg principle to governance in Kenya. What I mean by an egg? You have a yolk. That's where the embryo is. That's where the executive. Then the executive is oversighted by the county assembly. That's the egg hoid, right? Then the village councils and neighborhood association, you are the shell. Are we together? And that's why I'm going to create a beautiful shell. And I will want you to nominate the best in Kepsa to come and join me in the Nairobi Economic Social Council. That council is not for politicians. It's for people who are outside of politics in other institutions to help me as a governor because I don't have all the ideas on earth. I am not God, I said. I'm a human being who has come to serve. I need to work with you and go with you. But give me clean people who are honest, not corrupt people who want proximity to power to extract and continue to promote their private greed. I am for public need. If you want somebody to deliver public need, then I'm the man. If you want somebody to deliver private greed, you know who it is. Uh, you know, it, the choice is yours. You are the power. You are the power. You are chapter one. You are the sovereign people of the Republic of Kenya. I think I've answered all questions. I really thank you for this engagement. I speak the truth to power mostly, and I'm most comfortable at Kepsa because I'm one of you. God bless you for giving us an opportunity, for putting us on the spot on behalf of the people of Kenya to interrogate us. But I'll be amiss if I don't practice in Kenya Daima. Politics is not a gladiator sport. Johnson Sakaja, who is my worthy competitor in the other party, is not my enemy. He's a just a Kenyan who's putting himself up for candidature like I am. When I win on 10th of August, I will work with him. I will consult him because I'm beating him at 8.57 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> I will work with him. He's not my enemy. Let's not fight. Let us continue to listen to one another, continue to campaign in peace, and remember we are one united, indivisible country called Kenya, and respect the nationalist covenants of our founding fathers. Politics is not an enmity. And we should continue to engage the way we are engaging, and I truly respect all of you for listening to me, both the people physically present and the ones online. But if you forget everything I said, you Kikuyus, rescue Kenya <laughs> on 9th of August. Thank you. Let us have a very, very warm round of applause for Polika Pigade. Now we are coming to the end uh, of this very, very important event today. Just two messages. On 10th, we have the power, on 10th, to make Nairobi corporate. I think what we hear is that there will be a corporate culture if Polycarp uh, goes in, and that we shall start having terms such as a scorecard and a performance agreement. So there will be a structured method to aim for what needs to be done and ultimately, and ultimately monitor that performance. And then in ending I say this, he has pronounced himself in as far as his performance agreement is concerned based on three things. What were they? What was S? Society. Oh, you're listening. Very good, society. And the next one? Economy. E, economy. And the last one? It doesn't get any better than this. Thank you very much. Let me welcome Martha to come and lead us to the final session of our event today. But ladies and gentlemen, it has been a pleasure. Thank you for being extremely active, including those who are online and for sharing your
questions. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, engineer. And because of time, and we always say, when it feels like the end is just often the beginning, I would like to request the chair of Kenya Daima to give the vote of thanks. As usual, we have to say a Sunday. Aman Amnagani. Yes, Mr. Dr. Bimalkis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I know we're short of time, therefore I'll be very, very brief. Um, first and foremost, thank you, Polycarp. Uh, we can say Poly, we can say Polycarp Igate, we can say Igate. But I think Poly and your team, the entire team, I think. Oh, what's my alarm? Sorry. Uh, I think we want to say thank you very much to you and your entire team. I think may, may the entire team be recognized if you just stand up. And uh, we recognize you and your whole team. So. If your team just stands up, we just want to say thank you. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. And thank you for making time for uh, giving us what it is. This is a series that KEPSA runs, and that's what we're looking at, is to say, Kagua Belia Kuchagua, which means let us analyze, let us check whoever's coming on board, and I think that's important. Um, you know, we have this very clear saying, Miminim Kenya Daima, right? Nitatenda wajibuangu. I think that's the key question for every one of us. So I think everybody's going to answer that independently as we go along. And I think that's going to be important as we go further. So I think first and foremost, Wajibuangu, Nikupika Kura. I think that's the message that we want to send to everybody. Just go out there and pick a Kura, number one. Number two, Kuchagua, Yongos Bora. Right? We're actually leaving it to all of you. Look at it, Chagua, and then see. Kagua first and say, fine, this is the right team, right people, whatever. And I think it's issue-based. It's all issue-based, and I know it's really good. But again, at the end of it all, Kurubisha Mani. I think you're muhim. Very, very important for every one of us to say, like you said, Polly, I think whether win or lose, uh, we are all going to be brothers after 10th, and therefore brothers and sisters, sorry, I'd say for, for everyone. And I think you've got to exist together and say, fine, here's what we're going to do. Um, at the end of the day, we're looking for good leadership and accountable governance in place. That's what we're looking for, right? And I think this is for a prosperous and a thriving and peace. As Kepsa and Mkenya Daimo, we continue pushing this. I think the issue is let's all check out what it is. And this forum that, that comes up, I want to thank um, the Kepsa board, um, chair, Kepsa board, Kepsa council of advisors, governing council, and also led by um, Chair Flora. I think very well done. Congratulations for leading us into this. The Kepsa Foundation, I think Patrick was here, but he's left. Um, the whole Kepsa Foundation um, really encouraging us and saying, let's move this. The Kepsa Management, led by our CEO, very able, Carol Kariuki, and the whole team, I think Martha and the whole lot, lot of you, uh, well done for, for continuing this whole manifesto and really encouraging this to say this is what we need to have because ultimately whichever side we need to really entrench what we want to look at. The Mkenya Daima team, I think Marta Chiruto, um, Susan and um, and the whole team out there, Ferdi, the whole whole lot of teams, I think uh, the communications team, um, I think I want to say very uh, very big thank you for them to say let's make sure there's Mkenya Daima, the, the crux is now and really want to take it up make it happen. Uh, all KEPSA members, uh, all the members who are online and those who are also here present today, I think there's a whole long list I've been provided and I can't say it all right now, but all the captains of industry, both physically and virtually present, thank you very much. The entire media team, I think all the media people who are here today, uh, we must say thank you very much. And I think this is crucial for us to say, you are the people who got to disseminate this information right to the grassroots. And I think this is important to say, let these issues be brought out, let them all see it, and really, um, you know, make that happen. To all the service providers today, I think the video, the hotel, uh, the conferencing, all the facilities, and to the team that put it together. I think, Polly, we take your message, go see. And see is your Kaizen, it's your go see uh, in the Gemba, in the place where it's happening, and really take action. I think that's action behind words, because we've had a lot of NATO in the past. NATO is no action talk only. And I think this is where we need to move on and say, fine, let's get this done. But at the end of the day, I think scorecards. We all have scorecards, and I think that's important for us, uh, even in the private sector, everywhere else. Um, 
Mkenya Daima is composed of, you've been told already, I think, it's the religious sectors, it's, it's civil society, everybody to put together. But I think everybody has scorecards, and really, go check your scorecards individually. You will vote for whomever you want to, but ultimately, let's go back to issue-based. I know we have the women's groups, we have the youth, we have everybody together, and those people count. And I think this important point is we are transformative in Kenya, and I think we're transforming into a far more democratic organization, I think, as Kenya, and Kenya Inc., is democratic and this sort of dialogue is encouraged so i think this is a fantastic thing that we have so i just want to say thank you all very much for coming and uh, thank you to the team best of luck may the best people win and uh, all our best wishes to everyone thank you very much, thank you very much. so as he leaves we wish to play the kenya daima song to shangilie kenya let us celebrate the country and may God bless you all and go out and make a difference. I've been your host, Martha Cherito. God bless you. Let's go. DJ Inge, the song.
and Kenyans to look and see that this election is really about corrupt people versus not corrupt people. Okay. Number number one. Number two, the county assembly is going to be left with the responsibility of oversighting the executive. For far too long, the county assembly in Nairobi, because of proximity to the executive, has gone into the executive side. There's a lot of influence. When an invoice has to be paid in Nairobi City County, there are too many MCAs who chase the invoice. Uh, they should be chasing laws and speaking to the people. So are you, are you getting what I'm saying? I get you, and, um, and that has persisted for far too long. Um, and, 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 and therefore, uh, we, we, each one of us is going to get into a speciality. The people's representatives continue to be the people's representative and to hold me to account. Okay. That is what the county assembly should do. And to hold me to account with scorecards and performance agreements that come from the people of Nairobi. That's why it's Nairobi to Navyoitaka. It's Nai to Navyoitaka. So like today, I've received the Nai to Navyoitaka memorandum from the private sector alliance, and I'm very grateful. You mentioned and you, you actually highlighted the statistics that Kenya is a youthful nation, mm. that the Ministry of, uh, of the Youth should be uh, mm. uh, the, the bigger national conversation. So in the larger scale of things, what is in the larger scale of things, what is the place of young people and artists in the event that you elected? Um, Nairobi is going to be a city of concerts, music, art, music festival. The culture wheel will be brought to life, what we have seen here today. And by bringing the culture wheel to life, we create jobs for young people. Um, young people are really, this is their country. But for far too long, they have been treated as marginalized people. So really is giving them confidence and telling them what you're doing is what I used to do when I was young. You know, blue collar work is dignified work and you need deserve a decent job. I'm protecting them by making sure single business permits are attached to minimum wage enforcement uh, and giving uh, discounting there. So we are protecting them from exploitation and we are enabling them through creating jobs for them uh, and also respecting them by considering them to be adults. Young people sometimes speak as if they're children. They're not, they're adults. You become an adult at the age of 18. In, that's okay. In, in the recent uh, TIFA polls that were released, they have put uh, Senator Sakaja, who is your worthy competitor, like you say, ahead of you. And the same report put your party leader, uh, Honorable Raila Molo Odinga, ahead. Do you think the polls are credible? TIFA polls is lies told by lying liars. I repeat, TIFA polls is lies told by lying liars. In Swahili, ni uongo ambao unasemwa na waongo wakidanganyana. Um, I don't even read it. Those are polls bought by politicians to create a perception. You ask yourself, we have the Kamba nation, we have the Luya nation, we have the Luo nation, and we also have the Kikuyu nation who are contesting. How are we going to lose to Sakaja? They must be absolutely out of their mind. The real poll and I am a, I'm a market researcher. I'm a marketer by profession. I am a real consumer of marketing research. I'm a member of the Marketing Research Association. It is a shame what's going on with researchers in this town. Um, and uh, really, I don't want to comment. It's contemptuous to even comment about it. I don't even read it. The real, the real poll is on 9th of August. And um, Watashanga. All right. We are, we are going to win with over 1.2 million votes in Nairobi. We are going to obliterate, pulverize UDA in Nairobi. This city does not belong to corrupt people. The end has come. The anger on the street, they're underestimating it. And the, that's why I'm saying the, def, the, defining, the defining demography for the vote on 9th of August is Kikuyus. It's, only, it's a referendum between corrupt Kikuyus and uncorrupt Kikuyus. That is what this election is. Right. Not long ago, you had uh, an, uh, an indifference with, uh, with Governor Mike Sonko in, in that government, and your reaction was uh, to step aside. In the event that there will be a repeat of uh, maybe a disconnect with the person you will be with in office, how are you going to handle that? I'm governor of Nairobi, not deputy governor. The last time my party put a party list without consulting me. Cabinet was done without consulting me. I celebrate my Mbuvi Sonko for having taught me politics and brought me to the political stage. He's my friend, he's not my enemy. I am coming to serve for five years. I am no coward. If I was a coward, I would have refused to run this time round. I'm resilient, I'm sustainable, and I'm coming to serve. Um, and um, lastly, it's 
a shame for you to call yourself a politician who earns a salary and you do nothing for the people. Uh, and that is what I did not want to happen to me. And I was vindicated in two years uh, in terms of, 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 of what happened. So the subject here is about moving forward. And I am a graduate of Mike Sonko's Institute of Advanced Political Hindsight, School of Advanced Political Hindsight. I'm a graduate. I graduated, I learned something. I am not fresh. I am somebody who has come, and you don't learn anything from success. You learn everything from failure. People who are successful all the time imagine that's how the world works. But I, from failure, you learn. And last time I failed, and I failed quickly, and I went to pick my lessons. I have come back with those lessons. And failure is what is called experience. An experienced person is a person who gets employment more than the other. And I think Nairobi is no, I'm experienced. And I will, they will vote for me on 9th of August. They are that smart. They see. Lastly, Polly, uh, we have seen you do very many things, especially uh, with the lower, uh, with, with the common mona inchi. Is that the real you or some will even ask whether you're overdoing it? What is the position? That is the real me. When I worked in equity, I never sat in my office. I was always in branches. When I worked in Shell, I was a pump attendant and quality marshal. When I worked in Coca-Cola, I used to sell Coca-Cola. You know, you have a perception that a boss is somebody who sits in the office swinging with a chair and black leather chair. A boss should be where work takes place. Kaizen, be at the gemba. Be where work takes place. This will be a governor who is present where work takes place. And my actions is really to tell you I will govern by being present where work takes place so that I can especially celebrate the people who do their work well. Every boss can catch somebody doing something wrong, but it takes a special leader to capture people doing the right thing. You can never know your best employees if you're waiting for reports from supervisors who create a brokerage around you. Go to the field, and that is what I've gone to the field today. I'm also celebrating blue-collar work. I'm saying I'm a going to be the number one blue collar worker in the Republic of Kenya as governor of Nairobi, not the number one white collar worker. I will be there working with them, living with them, listening to them, responding to their matters. And because I am also responsible for the guys who swing with black chairs at the city hall, I'll be directing them to serve the people. And I think that is what Nairobians are looking for. And that is why my party jubilee brought me. My party jubilee avoided bringing people to the ticket who don't have degrees. I defeated them during the primaries. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time. Well, that has been uh, Nairobi gubernatorial uh, uh, aspirant, Poli Kapigade, live here at Villa Rosa Kempinski, where he was meeting uh, KEPSA, which is uh, a business uh, uh, body here, to establish the relationship that he would want to have with them so that they can make a Nairobi better. I am Marvin Gakoni reporting for Kenyans.co.ke. Keep it here for all your live updates.